Before we get started, I just have a couple of announcements. I do want to mention that uh, yes, uh, the last week's talk is now on, on starting point. And the easiest way to, to get to these talks is go to the website, startingpoint.org, and scroll down to Vince's Corner. And then when you hit my, Vince's Corner, go down to the bottom, it says Codependency Series. And basically the first talk is there. And tonight's talk will be on around three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So we're trying to keep that schedule and keep that going, okay? I also want to mention that I got a list of traits and characteristics of codependency. And if you want a copy of it, I'm going to ask you to put your email into the chat room and we'll get it out to you, okay? And also we're going to try to uh, put, put it on the website also so you can check that out. These are the traits and characteristics, basically, and we'll be talking about some of them today. Okay. All right. I'm going to begin by doing the reading from the language of letting go, which is a daily meditation book for codependency. I picked yesterday's reading as it kind of fits into our topic for today. Letting go of old beliefs. Try harder, do better, be perfect. These messages are tricks that people have played on us. Not, no matter how hard we try, we think we have to do better. Perfection is an always eludes us and keeps us unhappy with the good we've done. Messages of perfectionism are tricks because we can never achieve their goal. We cannot feel good about ourselves or what we have done while these messages are driving us. We'll never be good enough until we ch change the messages and tell ourselves we are good enough now. We, we can start approving of and accepting ourselves. Who we are is good enough. Our best yesterday was good enough. Our best today is plenty good too. We can be who we are and do it in a way we do it today. That is the essence of avoiding perfection. God, help me let go of the messages that drive me into the codependent crazies. I will give myself permission to be who I am and let that be good enough. When we started this series last week, we talked about the traits and characteristics of codependency. And I mentioned the fact that what I want to really concentrate on are some of these traits and characteristics, but the big one today I want to talk about basically is that so many of us have a tendency to guess what normal is. See, whether you realize it or not, I'd like you to take a look at what we call family systems and how they affect us. I mentioned last week that in the first 10 years of your life, you actually join and are part of five families. And all those families have an effect on you and many of your traits and characteristics come from them. They don't just come from your parents. They come from your culture, your environment, religious backgrounds. They come from all different areas, peers. They come from the world in which you live. And basically, we pick up a lot of messages, a lot of traits, a lot of characteristics. And those messages actually go with us throughout our whole entire journey on life. It's amazing sometimes because I never realized now, these things do have an effect on us later on in life. Now, the secret is to be able to acknowledge them, get in touch with them. It's a matter of doing your own history and then being able to develop them in a positive way. So I go back and I want to kind of share these with you because the family systems we're talking about are your blood family, and that can be an extended family. That can be anywhere from step parents, you know, to adopted parents. We also experience neighborhood, cultural, or environment families, our religious family system, our pure family, and finally, our society family. So I'm going to take you on a journey tonight through these different family systems, giving you some ideas, stories, and ways in which you can take a look at your own. I'm very grateful today because I realized a lot of my traits, a lot of my characteristics came from all these systems. And I realized today that they're part of who I am. They're part of my being. The best part about it is once you're able to get in touch with them, you really do learn about yourself. In fact, one of the things I talked to a friend of mine about, and it makes sense to me, this is really what spirituality really is all about. Because spirituality is getting in touch with the gift that you are as a person. But in order to really acknowledge who you are, you have to be able to go back into your history and learn from your history. So I don't look at it negatively today. 
But unfortunately, so many of us having gone through trauma, hurt, pain, and many other things in life, have a tendency to look at it negatively before we can look at it positively. But in time, we can work through this stuff and take the process and work through it. Then basically, we can be able to see good in every negative thing that occurred in the course of our life. And messages are messages. Here's the different thing about normal. Yes, Virginia, there is a normal. That normal can change on a daily basis. What was normal at one point of your life may not be normal today. The hardest part many of us have is codependence is we keep going back to those normals and trying somehow to fix them or change them or do something to them instead of learning just to accept them, to embrace them and learn from them. There are teachers. I use the example of my own mother and my own father. My mother had a very strong addictive personality. My mother was a hypochondriac. My mother basically was into amphetamines a lot of times. I understand a lot of it today from doing a lot of work that she took those amphetamines because she worked at a job where everybody was on no those pills on a can line of camel soup. And so as a result then, she literally, a lot of her behavior was centralized around her addictive personality. At the same time, she kind of passed out a lot of that on to me. So today I can say this very honestly. My mom gave me my addictive personality. I can look at it negatively, or I can look at it and say, thank you, mom, because it gave me the gift of recovery. And so I realized today that good comes from everything. My father, he was Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Fantastic, who did everything for everybody. And his mantra basically was, if you want people to like you, do everything for them. My father never did a thing for himself his whole entire life. He was always giving, but never receiving. I became my dad. That got me into a lot of trouble. And so as a result, I had to learn how to start setting boundaries. I had to learn that I have to take care of me. Because basically, I kept giving away, but not really putting it put in. And so I realized today, those traits are still there, and they'll be there. But it's something you have to constantly work on. At least I'm in touch with them. I acknowledge them, and I realize it's part of it. Even messages. My mom gave me a lot of negative messages. Messages that to me were normal then and not normal now. And some of them, we know the classic ones. For example, always wear clean underwear. Because God forbid you get into an accident. And if that happens, then basically, you know, even if you're dead, at least you have clean underwear on. I won't get embarrassed, you know. The other one I got from my mom very many times was, if God wanted you to fly, God would have given you wings. Well, I'll be honest with you. I was scared to death to fly. That was in my head. I never flew in an airplane until I was 48 years old. And I thank God that my wife was the first one who got me to go in an airplane, and I was scared. And here's the ironical part of it. There's a little piece of me, maybe it's a little kid inside of me. When I walked down that walkway, getting on the plane, I kept waiting to see if my mom was going to be standing there yelling at me. Now, it's amazing how these tapes play inside of yourself, how fears come up. And I realized today, if you walk through your fears, you're able to deal with stuff. But the messages are always there. And as a result, we have to try to look at the positive sides of these messages. My mom taught me a very powerful message of shame. Her, one of her mantras was, when you go out to play, make sure, basically, that you don't get hurt. So she was always protecting me. And I, I was like the typical little uh, only child, Italian kid with a little Italian mother. And I belonged to her. And as a result, I constantly got protected by her. One of the classic ones, and my wife can attain to this, you know, I was taught as a kid, never ride a bicycle because you might get hurt. I learned to ride a bike when I was in my 50s. It's amazing. I visualize, you know, the chief of police of Williamstown holding the seat of the bike, running me down the street, and he's older than me. And the crazy part about it is I can laugh about this stuff today and joke about it, but it's almost like those things stay with you for a long period of time. And very many times you have a hard time overcoming them and getting over them. That's why it's really important a lot of times to be able to acknowledge these messages, 
then be able a little bit at a time to break through and work on them. And these traits and characteristics fit so many of us, it's just unbelievable. And a lot of them come from control, fear. A lot of them come from anxiety. A lot of them come from the concept that we don't think we deserve. I know I joke about this today, but growing up in my Italian family, it can be any family, I was given three gifts at birth, fear, guilt, and worry. And a lot of things in my life, I, I carry them with me. That's why it's really important to acknowledge the fact that these are part of my traits. And here's the key. Your traits will always be your traits. The secret is to acknowledge them. Same when it comes to your neighborhood, your cultural, the environment around you. I grew up in South Camden. I grew up in the 40s in an environment that was strictly, strictly, strictly Italian. And everybody kind of stayed in their little, their, their little compound. And as a result, we were not allowed to be connected to anybody else. And as a result, then, we weren't allowed to do anything different. That's why, to me, very many times, it, it's crazy. A lot of our prejudices and things that were taught go back to those early years. We have to be able to break the cycle and be able to move in a new direction. But it's hard sometimes because they become normals to you after a while. But we're allowed to make new normals, develop normals in new ways today. I can mention certain places in Philadelphia and certain personality traits will come out. I can say South Philly. I can say Kensington, K and A. I can say Northeast Philly. I can say the Midwest. I can say California. Everybody grows up in different areas. We pick up traits, we pick up characteristics. We pick up a way of life. And as a result, it becomes normal. Good example. Growing up in Camden, people always ask me this question. How come you came from Camden, New Jersey, and you're a New York Yankee fan? And the amazing part about it is, I, I can answer that. Back in the 40s, everybody on the Yankee team was Italian. So all the Italians rooted for the Yankees. You know, because we basically only rooted for our own. And that, that rule was so powerful back then. You only stay with your own. You only marry your own. You only go around with your own. And some of my family members, when they violated that, the family almost cut them off. It's like they were dead. It was so strict and so rigid. And I'm learning today to make changes in that. But a lot of my traits and personalities, my Italian traits and personalities, still go back to that. So as a result, you know, hey, I talk with my hands. What can I type? as part of my traits, as part of who I am as a person. And so I'm learning more and more the importance of being able to get in touch with these messages that come from our family systems. I mean, take a look at religion. You know, it's amazing how things change. I grew up in the 40s. I went to an Italian Catholic grammar school. We had these ladies that taught me. I think they were called nuns. But back then, I really believed they were drill sergeants for the Marine Corps. Now, look at normal. In the 40s, the nuns in school hit us. They walked around and smacked you around. And if I went home and told my parents that sister hit me, I'd get hit again. And the bottom line is, I realized today that basically that same behavior that took place in the 40s, today it would be basically, they would be jailed for abuse. See how normals change? Things that happen at one time change to another time. And so we have to look at things through the eyes very many times of the generation, the things we came up in, where many of our traits and characteristics actually came from. And as a result, then even in religion, I grew up in religion that was strict, it was rigid, it was guilt-ridden. God was this taskmaster that was gonna get me, punish me, everything was about guilt, and literally, Religion was used to manipulate. It was used to keep me under control. And I realized today I can develop a new belief in my concept of God. But back then, that was my normal. Now I have a God of love, a God of change. But the scary thing about traditions and the scary thing about family systems is even when you start making changes, a lot of people get upset. So I don't think you realize this. So many of us are predictable. 
we've done the same things for a long period of time. As soon as we start developing new normals, and begin to make changes, people do begin to get upset. They go through changes. They don't know how to handle it. You know, even when I talk about recovery, I talk about different aspects. You know, I realize in my, my wonderful Italian family, I always love telling the story. I got stories, but I'll tell you a story. And I remember, I never forget the Thanksgiving. I use that, I call it the Thanksgiving from hell. I have to tell you about it. When I first got into my codependency recovery and I began to experience the books and all the material, I got so excited. So literally I went home I was still a priest at the time. I went home to my wonderful, fantastic Italian family. And I told them, guess what? I found all these books. I found all this stuff. And guess what? This tells, tells all about our family and how we can make changes and we can do this. And I never forget that, that, that Thanksgiving. First, first when my aunt looked at me and she said, you go to college, you come home crazy. You're nuts. And for the entire meal, nobody would talk to me. What I was trying to do was I was trying to fix people and save people and rescue people. I wanted them to be what I had, but I'm finally learning. I talked recovery with people that understand recovery. I took my life with people I trust. But I, I love my family. I spend time with them and they're great. But what do we do? We do small talk. I talk about their bunions. I talk about, you know, their hard operations or new, new, new knees, whatever, I don't know, the old neighborhoods, whatever. It's, it's just being able to accept people where they're at. And I think that gets into a lot of trouble with codependence because we get caught up in what I call expectations. I expect you to be this. I expect you to understand. I expect you to be what I want you to be. And it doesn't work. We have to learn to accept people where they're at, embrace them where they're at, and then we can set boundaries accordingly. Yes, there are people in our life that have hurt us. There are people in our life that have put us through a lot of changes. And we, we can set boundaries with them, but we can learn from them. See, I've learned over and over again to be able to look at my heritage, my background, my neighborhood, my culture, my religion, and look at it from the things I could take that are good. I learned something in recovery. Take what you can use and leave the rest. And so you don't throw the baby out with the wash. You learn that some things work, some things don't work. And so you develop the things that work for you. So you learn to make these constant processes of change. That's a big part of this whole process we go through in life. Then we have our peer family. And I'm going to tell you, peers are tough on peers. I know as a kid growing up, I ran into a lot of craziness, a lot of bullying, a lot of insanity. And again, a lot of it comes back to the fact that my mother overprotected me. So the kids a lot of times made fun of me. I had wonderful nicknames when I was a kid. Mama's boy, church mouse, because I was always in church. My mother always took me everywhere she went. I was always connected. And as a result, then they basically were pretty tough. And kids can really be tough. You know, and I realized today that even my body image and things of that effect, are affected by what people think of you. People call you names. They call you different types of things. They have an effect on you. Then you take them into your adult life. You keep thinking that you're not worthy. These things still play in your head. And so I got to be able to acknowledge them and be in touch with them and then be able to set my boundaries accordingly so I can grow and do some learning from that whole process, which is really important. But I know that each and every one of us in our own way has to be able to do our own inventory, look at our messages and realize those messages are only messages. That's all they are. And not to basically live by them, but to face them and then be able to develop them in a positive way. You know, I can look back on these things today and learn so much. Take, for example, society. We grew up in different areas in life. And I mean, for example, I grew up in the 40s. Well, one of my grandkids, one of my grandkids was born in 1998. The first 10 years of her life were from 98 to 2008. Now, I'm sure she got a lot more messages than I got. My only connection with the outside world was radio. And again, we were limited even what we got on that. My connection with TV, you know, 
we had the first TV in our house way back in 1947. I was seven years old. The TV was as big as the desk I'm at today. It had 32 tubes in it. We had a man in Camden go around called the Tube Man because they burnt out all the time. You know, we had rabbit ears for aerial. We had one channel. We had three hours of TV. Today we have what, 3,000 channels? We got technology coming out of our nose. It's just unbelievable today. We have everything all over the place that we can do. Look what we're doing right now. We're looking at things and doing things we probably never could have done before. And it's amazing. You know, and, and one of the hardest things in life is we have a hard time adjusting sometimes to change and realizing the fact that we get messages from so many different places today. My grandkids are exposed to things I was never exposed to. But now I am exposed to them and realize the fact that there's a good part of it, there's a negative part of it, and everything in life. I have to be able to sort out the healthy stuff and use it in a positive way. And that's the important piece of this whole concept. And realize the fact that each one of us comes from our own generation, come from our own backgrounds. And those backgrounds do have an effect on us. Our fears, the things that we are connected to. And so many times we try to control this. See, I've often said the biggest disease of codependence is control, fear, isolation, and running. And so many of us basically have to put on a good face on the outside. We picked up skills as a result of it. I use the example in my own life of my mom and some of the beautiful things she taught me. Now, did she, was she negative? Yeah, she had some crazy behaviors. In fact, my mother, you know, I could probably stay here tonight till about midnight and tell you mother stories. Now, my mother lived through the riots in Camden. She's one of the few people that enjoyed the riots. It's amazing, you know? I actually, they used to tell my mom, I used to get a kick out of this. If you hang the black African-American flag out one window, the Spanish flag out the other window, the house will be saved. My mom had to put the Italian flag in the middle. What can I tell you? My mom basically used to do some crazy stuff. One of the great stories of my mom Many of you are Italian, know what I'm talking about, especially from South Philly, or the white marble step. You know, one thing about an Italian mother, do not, do not, do not dirty her white marble step. That, that was called the biggest sin you could create. When they had the riots, the police shot tear gas down our street and the canister landed on my mother's step. Uh-uh. My mother went out there with a towel, wrapped the tear gas can, and threw it back inside the police car and told them, this is yours. Get it off my step. You know, hey, come on. You know, I, I get a kick out of it today, and I can laugh about this stuff today and go through a lot of stuff with it. But, you know, this is some crazy stuff. I mean, my mom lived in a tough neighborhood where there were gangs. She wasn't afraid. I was afraid. She wasn't. I didn't live there. She lived by herself. But basically, hey, she, she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody. She taught me how to survive, how to be able to handle things in life. So I got ordained in 1966 and went to my first parish. And when I went there, I was young. I was naive. I was 26 years old. I walked in, and the pastor happened to be an alcoholic who had disappeared for a couple of weeks. I was there all by myself. All of a sudden, I was running a parish. I didn't even know who I was, and I'm running a damn parish. And as a result, then, guess what? I did a good job. It's amazing. You come right down to it. Don't ask me how, but I did it. And the same thing as regards starting point. I started it. I ran it by the seat of my pants for 38 years. And guess what? It's still here. Loretta and I joke about this a lot. You know, she even says to me all the time, how did you do this for 38 years? I said, I don't know. Maybe it's because I never stopped to think. But I realized today, I picked up a lot of those skills from my mother. My mother was a survivor. You know, she, she never had a good life, but she was a survivor. And so I, I really have learned today how to be able to look at so many things in my life today through the eyes, basically, of trying to see things positively, trying to learn. You know, I, I can really get a real big kick out of my history today. And I enjoy my history, you know. And I love studying the history of my parents. You know, part of forgiveness and part of healing. I spent a lot of time being angry at my parents. 
and a lot of stuff that occurred. But I realized today, no. My parents were who they were. They were, believe it or not, my first teachers. I learned from them. And I realized today that the more you're able to acknowledge and get in touch with your history, the more you're able to acknowledge who you are. You're able to learn from things in life. So instead of spending the rest of my life <clears throat> being angry and beating people up, I want to be able to move on. And I feel sad sometimes. I got to tell you a story. It's a sad one. A gentleman I work with, or I tried to work with anyway, who in his childhood was severely abused by a clergyman and also by his mother. He spent his whole entire life to age 85 being angry at them, wanting them to change. And he lived his whole entire life waiting for them to come on board. Even after they died, he still carried on that anger, that rage. He could not break through it. And the sad part about it was, because he couldn't break through it, he was still being abused by them, even after they were dead, because he was giving them power. And so many times in our life, the negative things that happen to us, we suffer many times from post-traumatic stress. A lot of codependents do. Things that come up later on. And I realize today, things that happen to us when we're little kids, sometimes they surface later on in life. They surface in relationships. We'll spend the whole session on that in a couple of weeks. They sur surface in different areas. And we have to realize the fact that this is part of who we are. But being able to go back and study my family's history, my history, my neighborhood history, and realize the fact that all this stuff that happened to me in my life is what was supposed to happen. And I learned that those three basic spiritual words, I love those words, I talk about them all the time. Two of the great spiritual words are supposed to. Why were you born into the family you were born into? Because you were supposed to. Why do these things happen to you? Because they did. Now, can you embrace them instead of trying to make believe they didn't happen? Or the big mistake we make is codependence. We try to do our history and get rid of it. Can't get rid of it. Your history is your teacher. These things you experienced in life are part of who you are. And what's so beautiful about history is if you really do acknowledge it, you do get in touch with it, and you really do build a relationship with it, you can learn so much from it. That is the key to all the things we're talking about today. And again, change is not easy because change means people are going to get upset at you. <clears throat> I know in my own life, one of the things that froze me for a long period of time was fear, guilt, fear of change, fear of the unknown. I knew I wanted to leave the priesthood, but I didn't know how because I was afraid. What my family think? And basically, when I started making changes, a lot of people got upset. We got really got upset. But I learned something. Over a period of time, they'll get over it. Over a period of time, they'll adjust. Everything in life is adjustable. It's amazing. You come right down to it. So don't be afraid to face the things that occurred to you. Don't be afraid to acknowledge things that have happened. And maybe they're hurtful. They're painful. We have to be able to realize the fact that we have to somehow, some way, make peace with it, work through it, work through our fears, through our hurt, the things that occurred in our life, and be able to move in a better direction and be able to see it in a much more positive light. That's when I talk about this concept of normal. Normals are always changing. And my normal today is not the same as my normal yesterday. My normal Today in my life is a lot different than it was years ago. My normal will probably change tomorrow. My belief system is even in a process of developing and changing and learning new things. That's why I've said so many times in my process and many of my recoveries, there are no absolutes. Nothing's absolute. Everything's in process. Everything's in process. And if you get caught up in absolutes, it's got to be my way or the highway. Well, guess what? It doesn't work. See, if I have to make you get on board with me, I'm going to have a lot of agita, a lot of insanity, and a lot of craziness. The bottom line is, I have to realize the fact I am who I am. I'll be who I am. And my history makes me up of who I am. 
That's the exciting part about life. My history makes me up of who I am. The things I'm going through in life, even if they're traumatic, we lose people. We don't understand why sometimes. We wish we could, but guess what? That's one of the most dangerous things we get into is trying to figure out why. Why does life take us where it's going to take us? That's my other spiritual word. We all have a little bit of, I, I use the word fertilizer as a spiritual word. We all got some crap in our lives. We all got stuff that we've gone through. And we all have hurts and we have pains and we have things in that direction. But the bottom line is I can process my crap and it becomes fertilizer or I can sit in it and God does it stink. That's my choice. So I've learned over and over again, I got to process it. I got to realize the fact that, yeah, crap happens. Life happens. Now I can take it, learn from it, or I can stick, make myself crazy over it. But I'm no different than you. I got that Italian disease, mucapitosa. Mucapitosa means you're a brickhead. And basically, I, I got to do it the hard way first. I got to beat myself up six or seven times. I get tired of beating myself up. I got to be able to look at things and ask that question, why? Until I accept the fact that it happened. I got to be able to look at all the things that occurred in the course of my journey in life and realize it's part of it. Why do different people come into your life? Why do people in your life today? Because they are your new teachers. You are learning from them. Every individual, every relationship, the things we experience in life, they're all our teachers. They're all part of our journey. And that's what makes life so beautiful and so wonderful and so fantastic. Because we're always in that process of learning new things from people around us. And so I guess what I'm saying tonight is take some time to look back at your own family history. Take time to realize the fact that we all came from different family systems. These systems are part of who we are. We came out of different generations. We came out of different backgrounds. Now, a lot of our traits, a lot of our characteristics, a lot of our, um, I don't know, idiosyncrasies and things we've experienced, even our trauma, our hurt and our pain, good can come from it. People always ask me, if I was sexually abused, how can good come from that? I always ask them to say, well, you get to a point where you finally deal with it, that you learn something. Maybe you were abused, but now at least you know what it is. You have the power not to allow anyone else to abuse you. See, I can take power from negative things that happened to me. I can grow from negative things that happened. But it's much easier to deny them, to run away from them, to hide them, to go into fantasy land and make believe land. You know, but there's so much that goes on inside of every one of us. And that's why it's so important to be who you are. The greatest journey on the face of this earth is the journey of our personal self, is the journey of discovering who we really are as people. One of the greatest journeys on the face of this earth is to have and to be able to acknowledge and get in touch with and have that sense of gratitude for all the experiences we've gone through in the course of our life. I look back on my life today and I'm more than any different. I don't know where it is today. I love where it is today. Where it's going to go tomorrow, I don't know. I'll wake up, I'll walk, we'll work on it. But I know today I have some beautiful people in my life. I got my family, my wife, my kids, my grandkids. I got my community. I got people around me. I got starting point community, my recovery community. Wow. It's almost like a treasure chest. And I'm still learning from them. They're still my teachers, every one of them. I've learned so much from their lives, what they've gone through. And the bottom line is, realize the fact of accepting the reality of who you are, embracing your history, learn from it. Now, to do this, I want to cover some other areas of codependency. And next week, I'm going to get out of the heavy stuff for a while. And we're going to work next week on how to play and how to have fun. Okay, so we kind of have to work on this. Because... Codependents and adult children take life very seriously. We analyze everything, try to figure everything out. We have to learn how to relax and go with the flow. So I'm gonna ask you next week when you come to the group, either bring your stuffed animal with you if you have one. If you don't, you're a deprived child, but bring one with you. Or if you have a pet, your pet can be your stuffed animal, you know, or something from your childhood, you know, little things, maybe little things that you're connected with, maybe break you back. 
you know, I've also told people a lot of times, you know, anything we can connect back to our childhood is so powerful. It helps us be able to get in touch with that little kid that's inside of us. So have some fun next week. We're going to do some exercises next week. Some of the ones will kind of make you feel a little strange. I like strange exercises. Things that get, help you get in touch with different things in the course of your life and your journey. We'll talk about teddy bears and the role they play, stuffed animals and also pets and things of that effect. We'll talk about comic strips. We'll talk about all kinds of things next week. Not quite sure what's happening here. Um, let's give him a minute and see if he uh, comes back on. I'm gonna have to make him do this lecture from the office from now on. Ah, here he comes, is he coming back? He's stuck in fun. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, come on. He's got to have some good stories. I agree. He's stuck in fun. He's stuck in fun. Um, let me see if he tries to get back in, which probably not because I locked the meeting so we don't have any bombers come in. <laughs> so now he's calling me because he can't get in. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Okay. Hi, Vince. You lost power? Oh. Okay, well, we're all waiting for you to come back. <laughs> Um, that's because I, I locked the meeting. Tell you what, do you want to put him on speaker and he can talk? Um, he can talk his way out of this. All right, I'm going to put him on speaker. Okay, guys, so this is the plan. We're doing technology differently tonight. <laughs> can you, let me just bring the volume up. Okay, can you all hear him? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? We can hear yes. you. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, you're not hearing everybody shake their heads? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, get a closer with prayer. God, thank you so much for the gift of life, the gift of recovery. We pray in a very special way today. For all those who have gone before us, we pray to allow them to be our guides and our teachers. We pray for all of us that we may continue to grow as people and to learn the importance of who we are. Teach us to look within, to embrace our personhood, to realize that you are our guide, you are our strength, and you are our love. I pray every day in the course of the journey, God, that you will be with us, guide us, and be with us as we continue the journey of life together. So God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of our history, of our families, and teach us to acknowledge them, learn from them, and grow from them. We ask this, we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. And now we can go to pray the serenity prayer together. Okay, everyone. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done.